Hey guys, it's Misty from The Book Rat, and it's time for the next shelf in the Shelf by Shelf tour. This time we're moving on to the orange books. I have to say I'm really actually surprised by how many orange spined books I have. It's definitely not the most popular color for book spines. In fact, I think I have the least. Orange and yellow definitely have the least um, as far as my shelves are concerned, but it's still enough to fill a complete shelf, so kind of surprising. Of course, this includes the ones that are sort of reddish orange and yellowy orange as well, so I'm sure that helps, but it's still it's a lot of orange. I'm sure you know how this works by now. Basically, I'm going to show you the entire shelf and then go through and show you the covers of each one and talk about where I got it, if I've read it, what I think, all that jazz. If you want to see the super quick version where I just show you the covers and tell you the title and that's it, you can find that video here. But if you're going to stick around with this one, settle in for the long haul. There are links to all of the books below so that you can find out more about them or pick them up for yourself. But for now, I'll just get straight into it. Okay, so this is what my orange bookshelf looks like. Um, slightly cleaned up because all of my bookshelves are normally messier than what I'm going to show you guys. First up, we have this little section of Dash and Lily's Book of Dares by Rachel Cohn and David Levithan. Um, a while back, I went on a bit of a buying spree and bought everything that David Levithan had written. Just about. Um, but I haven't read any of them yet, so it's just people keep pushing him on me, and I found this one really, really, really cheap, so I couldn't resist. Of Bees and Mist by Eric Sataiwan. I'm not sure how you say his name. Um, I bought this for two reasons. Uh, number one is cover appeal. I know the glare doesn't help, but I just love this cover. Um, in fact, I believe I included it in my book spines with chat. Um, just really pretty. The other reason is it got a ton of buzz, so... Pick it up, pick it up. Scumble by Ingrid Law. This is the sequel to Savvy, which I absolutely adore. Um, I was really, really excited when I got this one, but I haven't read it yet. I think partly because I want to reread Savvy first, but I just haven't worked it in yet. I'm definitely looking forward to it, though. Rosie Little's Cautionary Tales for Girls by Danielle Wood. I love the design of this book. Um, this is definitely on the darker spectrum. It's more reddish than it is orange, but... Um, I didn't have any more room on the red shelves, and it is orange enough that it fits. Kitty Takes a Holiday by Carrie Vaughn. I bought a bunch of the Kitty books when Borders was closing because they were, oh geez, like either 25 cents or 40 cents or something well under a dollar. Um, and every now and then I just crave some urban fantasy, so I figured why not? The Girl Who Played With Fire by Stieg Larsson. This was at my Friends of the Library um, ongoing book sale that they have, and paperbacks are all a quarter, so um, kind of a no-brainer since it has such good feedback. Next up, kind of weird, but books 2, 3, and 4 in the Wrinkle in Time series by Madeline Langell. I'm not sure where one is. I'm guessing that it doesn't have a sort of orangish enough cover to be on this shelf, so I'm sure we'll come across that at one point in the tour. But anyway, we have book two, A Wind in the Door, book three, A Swiftly Tilting Planet, and book four, Mini Waters. I haven't read these. I bought them as a set because of how many people love these um, and, and list them among their favorite books from when they were a kid, and I felt robbed that I hadn't read it. The Drawing of the Three by Stephen King. This is the third book, no, the second book, of the Dark Tower series, and I love it. I love this whole series. Of Mice and Men by John Steinbeck. Um, I think, like, every version of this is orange. This is, like, the penguin orange, though. Kind of iconic for them. Um, I mean, that's a classic. That's a given. The Catcher in the Rye by J.D. Salinger. Um, I think I'm going to be talking more about this one soon ish within the next couple months because I want to make one of the book chat topics um, books that everyone else loves but you don't and this is one of mine. I don't know maybe I was never angsty enough to get into it or something. Stacked on top we have Anna Burning by Shannon Hale. This is the second book in the Books of Bayern series. The first is The Goose Girl which I loved um, but I haven't read any of the rest of the series yet. And then we have Jellicoe Road by Melina Marchetta. Oh I can't even I can't even. Like, you all know I love this book by now. Um, I just talked about it in book chat, the books that you wish that you could experience again for the first time. Freaking fabulous. I love it. Here we have our second section, Bride Flight by Marika Vanderpool. I'm not sure if I said her name right. Um, hi, Catcher in the Rye. 
this was sent to me, I had, um, this was made into a movie and I had a thing on the blog, like a little giveaway movie celebration-y thing, and had told the publicist that I didn't have time to read it so I didn't accept it for review, but she was like, I'm gonna go ahead and send it to you anyway because I think you'll like it and at some point whenever you can read it, that'll be fantastic. So she went ahead and sent it to me. Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban. Um, this could have gone orange or purple, but there are a couple of others that have purple in the spine, so it went orange. I think of it more of an orange book. Goosebumps! Why well, I'm afraid of bees. I have some of the books from when I was a kid that I loved. Um, I think the only reason I kept this one, though, is because it was orange and I needed more books for the orange shelf. Um, but I love Goosebumps. I did keep some of my others that were favorites. The Private Papers of Eastern Jewel by Maureen Lindley. This one I won from somebody, I believe. Um, but I have not read it yet. The Bean Trees by Barbara Kingsolver. This was another one from my library, um, Friends of the Library book sale, so it was only a quarter. I went ahead and picked it up. Kiki Strike, The Empress's Tomb by Kirsten Miller. I bought this when Borders was closing. I thought it was the first book, but um, I don't think it is now. I think it's actually the second book, so I haven't read it yet. But um, the reason I went ahead and picked it up was Kristen from... Um, the Book Monsters had given it a pretty good review. Cold Comfort Farm by Stella Gibbons. I was wanting a copy of this, it was sort of on my wish list, but all of the covers are just hideous, so I finally settled for the movie tie-in um, because it was on Better World Books, but yeah, I'm not a fan of any of the covers. I haven't read it yet, but I really liked the movie, and it was um, something quirky that I think I would really enjoy, so... I had to get it. Sati by Christopher Pike. This was one of my favorite books by Christopher Pike when I was a kid. Um, it was actually originally categorized as adult, and it might still be, but they've been repackaging a lot of his books lately, and this one got repackaged for YA. Um, I adored him as a kid, and I still have a big soft spot for him. Loved this one. I love the new design, and the fact that it's orange made me very happy, because that was another book for the orange shelf. Tales of Edgar Allan Poe, because he's the shit. Echoes by Melinda Metz. This is the whole series, Echoes, Haunted, and Trust. Um, I love the cover, and so it was in the Amazon bargain bin for maybe two-something, three-something. Green Eggs and Ham Party Edition. This was for the 50th anniversary. I did a blog thing for the 50th anniversary where they sent me two copies, one to give away and one for me. Um, and much like Edgar Allan Poe, only even more so, Dr. Seuss is the shit. The Lorax is my favorite, um, definitely. And in fact, I have a Lorax one of these days. Maybe I'll show you guys. I think the other favorite would be the one where they have the different things on their bellies. The Sneetches, the star-bellied Sneetches. I love that one. Dragon Haven by Robin McKinley. Um, I bought this just because I like Robin McKinley. It was at Ollie's for pretty cheap, so um, I figured I might as well. The Kitchen House by Kathleen Grissom. This just sounded really good. I haven't had a chance to read it, but it sounded like something I would like. And here is the third section. Pump Six and Other Stories by Paolo Batch Gloopy. I have most, if not all, of the books that he's written. The only one I've read is The Drowned Cities, which I really, really liked. Um, I heard such good reviews of this one. Rebecca of Sunny Brook Farm by Kate Douglas Wiggin. I have talked before about how I was a big classics reader as a kid and as a teenager, um, and this was one of them. It's very cheerful and happy and sunny brooky. Um, not quite as saccharine as Pollyanna, but very sweet and wholesome and um, just really enjoyable. Life of Pi by Anne Martell. I went through a phase where I wanted to read a lot of the Man Booker prize winners. This was one that I bought partly because it won and partly because it was getting such great feedback. Numbers 3, Infinity by Rachel Ward. This is actually the UK copy and it's um, copper. It's really, really, really shiny. Um, this was sent to me by my friend Bill because I really loved the Numbers series, um, 1 and 2, Numbers and Chaos. So since the US versions were coming out like a year later than the UK versions, he sent me the UK version <laughs> so that I could read it immediately, and I still haven't, because I just, I have this thing about ending series, like it's so hard for me to pick up the last book in a series sometimes, because then it's over, and so I just keep putting this one off even though I really want to read it. Little Bee by Chris Cleave. Um, 
a big part of this was cover appeal. Oh my god, I never realized that she has a cameo for an eyeball. Well, that's kind of creepy. Anyway, um, yeah, part of it was cover appeal. I really like the design of it, but it also got great feedback and just sounds good. Big Fish by Daniel Wallace. Um, this is sort of magical realist absurdistness, which I love, so I kind of had to buy it when I found a cheap copy. I've seen the movie, but I haven't read it yet, um, but I'm hoping that it's good. Stupid Cupid by Rhonda Stapleton. I won this from somebody. I don't remember who, I'm sorry. Um, I haven't read it yet. I, it's the type of book that I really have to be in the right mood for. Silverborn by Patricia Briggs. This is, I believe, book six in the Mercy Thompson series. It is very, very rare that I will buy urban fantasy unless it is on clearance or at my friends at the library book sale for a quarter. Um, they're the type of books that they're all sort of the same and you tear through them really quickly, so I don't really feel the need to spend my money on them. This is the one exception to that. I will buy every single one of this series until they start going massively downhill. I love them. This is All, the Pillow Book of Cordelia Ken by Aiden Chambers. This is, it had better be all, because it is one of the biggest books that I own. I mean, look at that. That's three books right there, and one pillow book of Cordelia Ken. It's massive. It is also incredibly gorgeous. I don't think that I included this one in my spines chat, partly because I didn't want to lug its heavy ass out, but good lord, it is beautiful. And no, I haven't read it, because I've really got to be brave to tackle that beast. Son of the Shadows by Juliette Marillier. This is the second book of the Seven Waters trilogy. The first is Daughter of the Forest, which I have talked about many times, is one of my absolute favorite books of all time. I did really enjoy this one. Daughter of the Forest still wins, though I have friends who like this one better. Um, I hate this cover. I really do. I hate the covers for the entire series, actually. But it's still worth it, even though it has a weird cover. Um, just... It's excellent. She's excellent. Every Inch of Her by Peter Sheridan. I don't know how I ended up with this one. Um, I don't even know what it's about, but it's here. Armageddon Summer by Jane Yolen and Bruce Cavill. I don't know that I've ever read anything full length by Jane Yolen, though I have read short stories of her, but I was a huge Bruce Cavill fan when I was a kid, so um, when I found this one I had to pick it up. It was really cheap. I haven't read it yet. Um, but yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Because of Win Dixie by Kate DiCamillo. This was a Newbery Honor book, and deservedly so. It is really good, um, very quick. It's a middle grade book, and just definitely worth the read. And yes, I know that one is yellow. I didn't have any more room on the yellow shelf, so we have two yellow books in this one. The other being Jane Eyre by Charlotte Bronte. Um, it's a mostly yellow spine, but it's on the orange shelf. It's an interloper. Um, I mean, what is there to say? It's a classic. I love it. Um, I have to kind of tisk tisk at Charlotte Bronte for insulting my Jane Austen, but I'll let her slide. I do like Jane Eyre. Warbreaker by Brandon Sanderson. I went to a panel a couple years ago at ALA and they gave us the books for all the panelists and Brandon Sanderson was one of them. I have friends that really like him, but I didn't know that at the time. He was one of the um, few authors in the panel that I hadn't really heard of, wasn't too sure about. Um, but I kept the book, just in case, because he was interesting in the panel. I haven't read it yet, but um, April from Good Books and Good Wine has been talking about Brandon Sanderson more often lately, and it's been making me want to read it. So. I'm glad I hung on to it. And then sitting right here in front, The Poison Apples by Lily Archer. This is a fairy tale retelling, um, so if they're cheap enough, it's pretty much a given that I will buy a fairy tale retelling without knowing anything about it, and this was the case. And Damosel by Stephanie Spinner, which I'm not gonna lie, I bought on title and cover appeal because I really like it. It takes on the Lady of the Lake from the um, King Arthur cycles, so I'm looking forward to that. And there you have it, my orange books. So that was my orange shelf. Definitely let me know what you guys think, if you've read any of them, if you want to read any of them, which one you thought was the prettiest orange, whatever you want, um, let me know in the comments. And just like I did with the red books, I challenge you to make a response showing us your orange books, if you have any. I know they are a bit of a rarity. So if you're interested, you can leave that as a video response. 
But for now, we're three shelves down and about a billion more to go, but we are done with red and orange. Until next time, that's all for me, and as always, happy reading!